Hello guys and welcome back to Strategic Command World War II World at War with our PvP against Sir Travis here. We've received the replay. It's been two weeks since I've done a turn, so this is taking a while. He's finally moving those guys from the eastern border. Okay, so we know he's coming west with that. He's pushing into Finland, as we could expect. We have interceptors flying overhead that are not upgraded at all, so I'm not going to do a very good job, but I guess it's better than nothing. He's going on a bombing run. Bombarding Vipuri for some reason. He said he misclicked with his ship, so I guess that's what that was. It's kind of pointless one way or another. Reinforcing, not pushing into Vipuri, though. He's got some things just running around the Black Sea. I think he's probably trying to get out or something, or just scout to see if we have any ships over there. They can't leave, though. Bombing into Ethiopia and attacking in Iraq, dealing two damage. Ex entirely expected. As long as that thing stays there we're making tons of money from that he's really trying to bomb us over by siwa oasis and now he's pushing up again even with the ar artillery Ooh. okay so he's but he didn't attack he just pushed up probably wants to use that arty or something that's my guess lots of movements in china he's just giving up the south by kui chow he's just giving up that southern fortification Guess because he's tired of seeing me just slither on up there like that. We're disrupting like half of his MPPs from Canada and probably about all of them from Australia. Spotted some anti-air. Special forces on Honolulu, no surprise. Special forces over here. So he still has some things over here. He's not sending everything yet. Might not have the MPPs to do that. But he definitely operated some tanks over to the west. I think he wants to stay defensive over there because I think he kind of expects me to attack him, honestly. Let's see, to ensure an Axis victory in the decisive conflict in the East, it would be advisable for us to send an expeditionary force to serve alongside our German allies. Given your approval, this force will consist of an HQ and two cores. It will cost us 400 MPPs at 40 MPPs a turn for 10 turns. We'll deploy near Warsaw for service on the Eastern Front. The Italian Expeditionary Force. An HQ and two cores? Saying no to this is retarded. It may be a lot of MPPs, but... It's way less than I would spend on it by default, and I get to spread that cost over a number of turns. Yeah, dude, give me that Italian Expeditionary Force, and we're going to get that sent down to Africa. <laughs> I fully expected him to take Jonesu and try to push forward at least a little bit. Don't know how far he's going to go with that. I wouldn't be surprised if he goes for Kuopio here. And he pulled away from Sala. So, I guess it's just because he didn't have the supply. He was like, it's not worth it. He saw how upgraded I was. He was just like, fuck that. Looking at Germany, we're definitely putting at least one research going on. Like, we're just finishing them so quickly. We gotta keep putting at least one per turn on the line to try to stagger this along. So, let's get production tech going some more. Because buying units is going to be just a really long-term important thing for the Germans to do. So, we've spent that on that. We can deploy the 10th German garrison right now which we'll just place over by Warsaw or Konigsberg doesn't really matter it'll need to operate out to the front sooner rather than later and Japan's next heavy artillery is ready to go I'm not actually sure where to stick that though because we just have so many things out here as it is anyway need to be delivered let's say we put pay for that garrison to go on a transport right now and place the artillery right there where it was. We don't get a lot of new units as Japan. And the ones we do get that are land-based are usually all going to the same place anyway. We were recording some PvPs for Imperator Rome. And we started talking about Strategic Command. Because Rift and uh, Narfi were asking how it was going. I got to feel Travis out a little bit. He was talking about how he really wished he had played the Axis first. Because he... His morale cannot sustain all the losses he's been having. So, based on what he told me, I think my assumptions of like his morale loss and any desperate acts he does really just being to get some kind of victory in for his own sake, not really for any practical reason, is pretty correct. It sure seems like it's pretty correct. Damn, you guys don't have an HQ you can attach to down here. No, I guess not. Not without another HQ moving further down. Hmm. Okay. It really does seem like almost his entire defense is based down here, unless he has another one just somewhere up here I can't see yet. This one feels so much weaker. And so, we're gonna get started bombing that. Take the Africa Tactical Bombers. We might as well go for this. 
He's got some little pea shooter interceptors there. I think with that character model, they don't really have any upgrades to them at all. Our escorts are amazing. We dealt four damage to his planes, took no damage to any of ours, and dealt two damage to this enemy right here who is still a little bit entrenched. What I'm most concerned with here is breaking through past Orsha, taking Vitebsk, and getting up to Smolensk. That's kind of my goal here. So this is the main thing in my way before this army. Let's go ahead and do another tactical bombing of it. His fighters can't do anything else. We dealt another one damage, took no damage. These tanks can now probably blitz right through this guy. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. Four damage dealt, none taken. And another three damage dealt. We wiped him out, unfortunately, took one damage, despite not being projected to take any damage. But you know what? It is what it is. I'll move these tanks forward as a scout. He has an armored train on Smolensk and light tanks back here. I wonder if this is where those light tanks from the east went. Because we know he moved those, at least. I don't know. I think those cavalry, he might be getting ready to move. He hasn't moved these special forces. He still has a core here. This makes it pretty clear to me he's not planning on attacking here, though. So we could definitely leave our garrisons there for right now. I may attack there later. We'll see. For right now, no, we're not doing that. But in the future, maybe. We could definitely use as Germany another garrison getting made. Like, we need to start pumping out garrisons pretty regularly. And some of these other guys, like, oh, well, you know, Bulgaria, Hungary, Romania, like, they have garrisons that are available as well. Their units would be a little bit more expensive, like five MPPs in this case. But I would prefer to forward deploy units from them rather than from Germany proper. So... We'll probably get started building some of them at least one at a time right at least one at a time so a garrison from romania let's go ahead and just purchase one nice and simply or 14 mpps remaining we're definitely going to reinforce these fighters uh either upgrade or reinforce actually i'm not sure either one would help quite a bit i think i'll go ahead and just give it the works of an upgrade not a reinforce just yet because it'll be fine for right now it needs those upgrades and, oh boy, we'll need to reinforce the Helsinki core, which is not entrenched because it's on a lake. A lake is not a great place to defend from, but with a field artillery behind you, you know, hopefully it's not too bad. And then we'll reinforce this second core up to max because we kind of need that. We've already gone ahead and purchased a Finnish core with full upgrades. Oof, not sure how this 302 MPPs will stretch. I was wanting, I know, to buy the other core. Not full. We didn't give it mobility. It doesn't really need it. 197 if we wanted to afford more. We'll have to see how MPPs work out there. We'll have to see. For right now, we have our other focuses. Like, for example, got to reinforce this sub. Get that up. We got a sub that can get advanced subs one. We got to get that paid for so we can get those subs back out there as soon as possible. This is the way to do it. We could, if this was a different port, get elite reinforcements on this, but we can't, so we won't. And then we'll send another sub back over there so it can get an upgrade to advanced subs one, swap out, do more raiding. We do have the rockets available. Let's go ahead and rocket London. Dealing that same one little damage. And then also Portsmouth. That same damage, just harassing him, making him lose some MPPs. My biggest problem right now up front here is this army at Vitebsk. So we're just going to spend probably the rest of the tactical bombing right there. Oh my god, we took two damage somehow. This time we dealt one damage, took none. That first bombing did not go too swiggity. We'll definitely move the third army up as far as it can get right here, which is not actually excessively far. And then we're just kind of staring off at each other. Which is not really what I want. That's not the greatest situation. I'm going to move forward. This is a little dangerous, but we need to stay aggressive here. I'm going to move forward with both of these armies kind of surrounding Batebsk. It doesn't have any anti-air, so it just got really, really lucky with that tactical bomber, it seems like. Well, nothing I can do there right now. I can do some blitz attacks right now. Keep tactically bombing it later. We would definitely lose some units. I remember I had asked why he wasn't doing a big offensive here. Just kind of like... Well, I mostly just said I found it interesting that he wasn't. He told me he didn't see it as being worth it, that there was no point if he didn't have Lend-Elise active. So, 
Right now, he's probably just building the UK up, but he might stay kind of passive here for a while. I think he's just forming, like, a front. But I think that was a mistake, what he did. We'll see. We'll see. I have some feelings about that front. Germany is not going to have enough money to do everything I want to be able to do and purchase another Finnish unit. Not like this. So I kind of have to pick right now of what I want to do, what I want to move. I think I'm going to focus the main front and not Finland getting another core because this will make a hell of a lot more difference. So we're going to upgrade to advanced tanks level 2. The Africa core tanks right here. There's going to be some movement going on. So we're going to take this core. I'm going to send it. It doesn't need to be this one, but it probably will be this one. Yeah, I'm going to send it right across this river here. Not as a push, per se, but just to make room for Von Lieb to move forward. Increasing our supply up front a decent amount. We'll send Von Manstein into Minsk right behind that. Supply is going to be kind of all over the place, you know? One, two, do we only? No, one, two, three, four. Right, we have another, okay, we have another army. I'm going to move the 14th army towards Gomel. Which we have a good chance of actually hurting with a blitz attack and taking no damage, but I'm not sure if I actually want to take that risk. We could get the Romanian fighters upgrading right now. That's another 48 MPP spent because we have these German ones. Low supply or not, it could handle anything over here. Um, we will try this blitz attack. We'll try it. We dealt one damage. We took no damage. Okay, that's about what I could have hoped for then. I'm happy with that. It's forming a front over here for now. I'm not going to do any more blitz attacks up here or anything. We're going to have some upgrades going for sure. For sure. We need infantry weapons and mobility on a bunch of guys, but I got to figure out how the other fronts are going before I really divvy that up. Supply should be decent enough on this front. We're going to send this core up behind this army just so he sees some presence so he doesn't think that we're weak on this side or anything. Supply will get better right here, so I'm probably going to move up maybe? Form a little bit more of a presence so, you know, he doesn't think to come down after these fighters. That's my hope. That's my hope of what that accomplishes. I could get full upgrades on this core pretty easily, and I think I will go ahead and do that. Yeah, we need a lot of mobility here, so if two weapons, mobility on both of these cores, get them up to snuff. We have two more cores here to get up to snuff, but that's not something we're going to be doing right this instant. And I mean, damn, there's still a lot of other cores here that are going to be moving up this side anyway, so we'll be able to establish a presence for sure. Using some force marching, we can go ahead and form a nice little core wall, upgraded cores in front of the planes, so he doesn't think about doing anything there. We know this recon is going to go north and help up that side, because I think we're going to have a lot more mobility there due to how heavily he's defending down hither. So that and one core. They're going to have to use some force marching to really get up anywhere important. So I'm not quite sure where to send them exactly, but I think the recon where there might be... Oh, they're both marshes. Just one is on a road. Okay, well, this core would have more opportunity to attack and would actually probably do more damage. We'll send that right up the middle. And we'll send the recon over here strengthening this front defensively we've pushed forward and now we're going to have to kind of regroup get those upgrades in and keep pushing it's june this is when the invasion is supposed to start so we're definitely ahead of schedule as far as things go there's a chance to avoid taking damage on the romanians here i'm gonna try to take it even if we yeah lure out his interceptors which i kind of expected oh we have these ones flying escort that's weird but okay Dealing four damage to his fighters, taking two damage to ours. Dealing another one damage to his fighters. No damage to me or the garrison directly, but the garrison is weakened now. To the point where, unless we get a bad roll, we should one-shot it without any damage to ourselves. I don't really know which one to attack with. The southern one, I suppose. Just need to break through here. Okay, we wiped it out and we took no damage. The next thing over here we want to weaken is Kiev. So let's take our straight shooter tactical bombers and do a tactical bombing. No direct damage dealt or received. Entrenchment stays the same, but his readiness morale is going down. We have a better chance now with another bombing. Dealing two damage and taking none. Definitely feeling the pain there, I can see. We could go for another bombing with a medium bomber. I think I will. 
Let's try to weaken him a little bit more if we can. It's probably just out of readiness and morale, quite frankly, at this point. If we get really lucky, we can one-shot him. That would be really, really lucky. We'll go ahead and use the fourth army here. Oh, wow, we got lucky. Well, sort of. We one-shot him, but we did end up taking some damage, unfortunately. Now, we can move either one of these guys forward onto Kiev. And I think I'll move the army that's actually better off. We only have two German armies down here. We have way more of the other ones. So we'll send the stronger one down there. We have a mechanized enemy unit here that is very low on entrenchment and stuff. It hasn't really recovered from other things. We'll take a blitz shot at it, dealing one damage, taking one. So that roll didn't work out that great for us. I would like to shift my line here southeast because I want my coalition forces, as I call them, to be gathered up down here. And I believe I have the capability to do that utilizing a couple of cores. So if we look at, say, sending the 5th Corps down there, we're not going to attack. We're just getting into position with units that are already upgraded. Step on Cherkassi with this core right here. These are just engineers. This is the weak point in his defenses, for sure. The Romanians, then, can press up against the Dnieper down here, and the Hungarians can move after them. That's kind of my idea. So let's send the first Romanian army that's already attacked down there. Oh, boy, look at this. Let's send the second Romanian army down here. Ooh. With some preparation, we could probably do some big damage to this anti-air. Good thing we didn't bomb here. I was actually really tempted to. And then we have the Hungarians. One of which will end up right over here. The army. We'll have another Hungarian army end up right over here. Press up against the river. Press up against Dnepropetrovsk. I don't know how to say these words. We have the Hungarian core. It's not upgraded. I don't know if I want to put it on the front right now when it's not upgraded. I could. I don't think I need to. I could just upgrade it or just move it up and then upgrade it later. I have very limited MPPs. These tanks are something that I really want to get upgraded, actually. Because it would just help so much. So I'm going to upgrade both of these tanks to level 2 advanced tanks. We have 60 MPPs remaining. We're going to get the Bosanska Corps from Yugoslavia moving down to Syracuse, and the game is going to interrupt me by auto-saving without my permission. Thank you. Thank you very much. Fuck you, whoever made that decision. I hate your guts. This paratrooper, we'd love to get somewhere up there at this point. I could spare the MPPs. 18 MPPs to operate it up to, say... Saint Malo. Yeah, it's a decent spot to leave another defensive unit. It was never going to run all the way there. It's not fast enough for that, even remotely. 42 MPPs remaining, so we're very, very limited. I've taken the chance to get the Hungarian core upgraded. We still have a couple more cores here that can use some upgrades, including the Afghan core back here, which is already upgraded. It just needs MPPs to really do anything. I guess it's going to split up from some of the other Africa Corps. The Africa Corps is all split up at this point. We also kind of need to move forward. So we're going to need a stopgap. The Slovakians will move them forward. They're going to be my stopgap right here until the Hungarians can fill in. The Hungarian HQ is thus going to move forward right up to the front line. Yes, now we have perfect supply. Much better over here. It was way worse than this just a second ago. 23 MPPs remaining is not a lot. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put this core up here in the swamp as kind of a just a defense to these planes right now. As much as I want to upgrade these, it can still wait. These cores need to play a little defensively, not entirely offensively here. Just looking at what our other options are right now. Not a whole lot of options. We'll send this core up to Zidimir as well, I'd say. And probably going to spread out a little bit here. It may not be the best for supply, though, what I'm thinking. Because I'm thinking of moving Rommel down to Venitsa and moving Von Bach over to Umen here. I'm not really sure. Just think about how supply might spread. If we move Von Bach down to Umen, how does that affect supply? It's, it's a bit better. Uh, eight, seven, six, five. It might get worse over here if I move Rommel forward, so Rommel might just have to stay where he is for right now. 
until we can more safely get him onto Zidimir. I didn't feel very safe about sending him there right now. I wouldn't be surprised if just to eat, because I've heard Travis talk enough at this point about how he feels about this playthrough. He's desperate for a win. It doesn't have to be a good win. It can be an AI win. We saw him use AI tactics when he went on his offensive over here in China, where he's just trying to get in even a small little win that doesn't really help him at all just for his own morale boost, even if it just hurts him in game. So I'm trying to avoid giving him opportunities to do that. Not to keep his morale low, but just to stop me from taking that damage. We'll go ahead and put these fighters onto Venitza then so that they'll have supply. There should be less strain on these guys now that so many cores have moved up. And with 23 MPPs, again, not a whole lot that we can do. Maybe we could focus it on a ship. Get an upgrade or something in for a ship. We haven't been upgrading any of our ships. And eventually, we're going to want to do that. It's only 41. Like I mentioned, I do plan on buying more ships eventually. Some of these have very long build times. Total of like a year and a half for a carrier. But I think I'm good to not invest into this until like 42. Because then, if I make the biggest purchases first, and then the smaller ones after, we could build towards a 44 Sea Lion, kind of. Which I think is when Sea Lion historically would have taken place after Hitler skipped out on the early one. We could get not full upgrades, but an upgrade on one ship. Or we could just continuously invest this into other things. We didn't reinforce the Iraqi garrison. Well, good thing I kept some MPPs. Get that back up to 10. No matter how much money he costs me here, it's all a benefit. Because he hasn't retaken this oil. This oil's still in my hands. So the longer that this stays up and running, the more this oil and the MPPs from here just stay in my hands. There's, no, again, nothing I can really do to reinforce it other than that because it's just so detached from literally everything else. Only 18 MPPs remaining, and I'm not quite sure where I would spend it. Whatever it does, it'll be very... Very minuscule. Well, I was gonna say, let's just spend it on the Africa Corps, and the game rudely interrupted me by auto-saving. Oh, I fucking hate that, man. Anyway, so, we will spend it on the Africa Corps, only 8 MPPs remaining. That's about it for Germany, then. We still could move this around, the Cadfish sub. Currently, is just raiding Canada. We... Canada's not a bad thing to raid, and he can't raid all of it by himself, so, I mean... It's not a terrible place to leave him, but I might just move him up a little bit. I would love to shift him north, the UK, USSR, because I don't know what he's pouring through there. Either way, raiding Canada, he's not maxing it out anyhow. We need to wait for these guys to get up to snuff, send them back around, and also eventually get those other subs pumped out. We have one coming, looks like, next turn. Two more in August. Those will be perfect for sending up here to the UK, USSR line. Until then, he might just get to use it mostly consequence-free. However, right now we know he feels strained as the UK. And if he's sending all that money to the USSR, or even a lot of it... Let's look at this. He's moved up. He has this artillery, yeah. But he has, like, no supply and no entrenchment. He is vulnerable. Vulnerable in a way where it could be definitely worth it to attack, even as Italy. And honestly, I think I will. It may not be the smartest idea, but the... KDR we could get while we know he's also probably distracted funding the USSR. I think it's worth it to at least try right now. There's a brief window where we could do a fuck ton of damage. We dealt three damage to his fighters. Between our planes, we took three damage. Make that four. No direct damage dealt to the tanks. I, I don't really expect a lot better from Italy, so that's fine. But the readiness and morale is weaker now. So take the fifth army. I don't care if he has defensive artillery. We're going to fight right through it. We dealt one damage, we took two damage, this is ending up not the greatest. We're gonna take the first army, follow up that attack, trigger that defensive already some more, that's fine. And we dealt two damage, we took one damage. This is barely cutting even, but you know. We'll attack this army now as well, dealing three damage and taking none, his already has clearly run out at this point. We can do some moving around here to get more chances to attack in. I think I will uh, maybe do that here. I, I, I wish I could see the values of the attack before I do some stupid shit like this. But uh, if we're injured, I wouldn't be surprised if he decides to attack. We don't really have a lot of entrenchment, at least on these guys right now. Anyway, so I think I'll, I will just, you know, risk it. We'll move the army away. 
so that we can move a core into position. Yeah, this core right here, we could get one to one with a core versus a tank. It would technically be worth it pretty well. And then we can move this army away, move another core into position, just kind of see what odds we're getting. And then even go as far as to swap this core in. And even though these are all one to one, we could go for them. I feel like against the army might be the best thing. So let's go ahead and attack the army. We dealt one damage. We took one damage. That's acceptable. That's a win since we're using a core. Dealt two damage. Took no damage. Okay. We'll just keep on the offensive. Took one damage as this core dealt no damage. We fucked up this army. It pushed up and we fucked it up. He's going to have to reinforce it. If he does it in place, it won't go very well. Field artillery or not. I have another, like, an untouched, an unfazed army ready to go. So I'm not really very concerned there. It leads 175 MPPs that we could spend on research. I was going to spend it on research. I'm not so sure at this point. No, I think I'll just continue to hold on to it for right now. I think we're going to need it for other things. So we'll just reinforce this core for right now. We do need to continue to move some things around. He can't do an attack in this direction very easily. This garrison, though, I don't know if this really has any purpose right now. For now, we'll just we'll move this core back on the Siwa Oasis, and it should be fine. This tank will leave nearby because even though it's an Italian tank and not that great, it could still be helpful. We have this core ready to go. We'll move the garrison up to get it a little bit more ready to go. Still in some supply. We have done a decent bit of damage. If he's sending MPPs to the USSR, he'll have some trouble paying for all this. Italy will have some trouble paying for all this as well, but this is a rare opportunity he's left me to deal some back and forth damage. Uh, it's probably one of the bloodiest fronts for us, but you know, it's Italy. As for Ethiopia, we're not really going to do anything. He's taking forever to do stuff here. It's taking a lot of time from him. It's continuing to give me MPPs, especially because I put no MPPs into it. So that just makes it a big win. With that, we've done Germany and Italy, everything that I realistically plan on doing with them. Right now, these subs aren't moving. The Navy isn't doing anything. We're just saving onto Italian MPPs, using them for reinforcements and any upgrades, etc. that's necessary, especially over here on this front, as well as the purchase of maybe still, I'm not sure yet, but I know I wanted some heavy artillery for them for this World War One style front that we have to kind of help match the fact that the Brits have some field artillery here. Don't know how necessary that will be, but I can't afford it yet anyway, so we're just gonna hold on to it. Fuck you, game, when your stupid fucking autosave. I hate that so, so much. We only have Japan left this turn, but we are mostly out of time for this episode, so I will happily call this right here, and then we'll take on Asia in the next episode. So for now, thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>